who is Atelier Capital? We are an office uh, founded in uh, 2000 by uh, two German architects in the, in the Netherlands. And we are, have our office in, let's say, the most famous uh, building built in Holland in the 20th century, the Fanelle uh, factory. And let's say we like this building very much because we think uh, you can find here the typical uh, modernistic qualities like a lot of glass, open floors and a lot of flexibility. Uh, we are sitting in uh, an old warehouse next to the factory and we are currently working with uh, uh, 22 uh, employees. And um, very often people say, okay, that is the Dutch office run by two German guys. Huh? But the reality is here is much more complicated. We are at the moment with seven nations. And we are really a sort of, uh, let's say, I would say European uh, office. We feel really the, the European context because we parallelly uh, speaking uh, four languages in the office. And we work at the moment uh, in six different uh, uh, countries. And regarding housing, we work in the Holland, but also in Germany, Belgium, and in France. When you look on 20th century uh, housing, you see there are a lot of contradi contradictions. Eh? On the one hand, people want something specific. On the other hand, the neutrality is the only basis for a certain sustainability. We see that, let's say, a lot of people want lofts, but in reality, they have children and need sleeping rooms. So the houses should be, let's say, allow both conditions. We see that uh, it's nice to live in an apartment in the city, but at the end, uh, a lot of people still want something like a terrace house. So how can you combine it? We see that individuality is a very important uh, basis for human uh, for well-being, but a certain collectivity is also necessary, so how you arrange that. We have this kind of game between urban and suburban condition that will be very, uh, let's say, prominent, I think, in this for this century. Uh, we have the discussion about ecology and economy, because very often ecology means spending more, and you, that's why you don't get it. So the only way to to, to reach a certain sustainability is to link it somehow to economic structures. And uh, the other thing, and then the last point is that, yeah, okay, we have little money, so we have a certain poverty somehow. Yeah? We are as a sort of society, we are relatively poor in our, let's say, ex uh, aesthetic <laughs> expression, but we have to find a way to make something nice out of it. The second project I would like to show is a sort of uh, uh, collective housing project. Uh, apartment building and in that case it's apartment building for 50% uh, students and 50% social uh, homes and what we actually try to do is to bring in within a sort of more or less conventional uh, um, program <coughs> as much as space as possible to make sort of a loft like housing what is always related to the to artists on one hand and to the upper class on the other hand to, to bring that also to, to normal uh, people, to make it affordable. Our strategy is actually a bit similar to the, to the Duroha strategy. So what, what, what we always try to do is first to make the building as compact and uh, claustrophobic as possible to get, uh, to get let's say, a, a, very good, a, very good economic, a very good economic basis. Eh? Uh, we try to, uh, let's say, organize the apartments around the edge and try to bring in let's say, as much as possible apartments per floor. So normally we propose to make uh, between six or eight uh, apartments per floor because uh, uh, you make two, for instance, per floor, then it's much, far too expensive. And then we try to, let's say, uh, open up the structure by two strategies. And one is we bring, let's say, in a lot of glass. So you get a, a lot of light into the apartments. And on the other hand, we always try to put in a sort of void in the in the middle of the building <coughs> to realize a sort of let's say a collective space inside uh, the building that you nearly get for free because of the fact that the structure is so uh, cost efficient. This again approach is a project in Zwolle, it's a hundred kilometer north of uh, uh, Amsterdam, again in a sort of 1960s area, what is at the moment uh, restructured. And this is a photo of the uh, finished of the finished project in the evening situation. And uh, what we like here actually very much is the, the let's say the 
the, 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 the scale and the expression of the building because in fact we used relatively big elements so this is like five meter by three and by that the building looks relatively uh, uh, small in terms of uh, proportion because it's quite uh, let's say that the, the scale of the elements is quite big and there's a sort of interesting combination of let's say on one hand a sort of very rigid uh, grid so it's like a bit like a sort of uh, 19th century Chicago like strategy or uh, the Umos approach but because of the fact that the elements are quite open you get this kind of interaction between inside and outside and you see that let's say the single interiors of the apartments are part of the uh, expression of the building and the building is actually organized in a let's say relatively efficient uh, way with a sort of central a core with a double staircase, a lift, and then a little atrium in front of the lift. And then we have the bigger social homes at the corners and the student housing uh, in the middle between them. And the orientation is uh, north-south, and by that you have a good, uh, let's say, orientation towards the sun for all uh, apartments. And I think the a really unexpected quality in the building is the fact that you have this kind of void because when you see the building from outside you think it's just stacking of floors but when you're inside you have a sort of double high entrance hall and then there's a sort of void running through the whole uh, building bringing daylight also in the access zone what's not very common for uh, these kind of projects. The building is built for a budget of 850 euro uh, per square meter. I mean, this is really, within, even within the Dutch uh, uh, condition, very cheap. And I think it's really the one of, let's say, seeing the quality, uh, let's say, or seeing the relation between price and quality, one of the, let's say, um, uh, most interesting buildings built in the, in, in the uh, last years in, in Europe. And uh, this is a photo of the, uh, of the interior. So we have a sort of, uh, let's say the lift shaft in the middle and then the void of three by six meter going up through the whole uh, structure. We had actually, uh, let's say, uh, a lot of discussion about the treatment of the interior, right? because you probably is also meant a little bit as a sort of provocation. It was a sort of uh, repetition of uh, Le Corbusier's invention of the beton brut, <laughs> because originally also wanted to stick the buildings, and it just happened because of the same reason. And uh, but I think we, we talked uh, uh, to a lot of uh, let's say inhabitants of the uh, of the building, and it was quite interesting that uh, I would say 80% of the of the of the people we talked to like it because they thought it's somehow a sort of design decision and. Uh, so it's, let's say, acceptable. And, and when you are there, it's interesting because it's because of the fact that you have the big space, uh, let's say, uh, it's not just, uh, let's say, the roughness of the material. The apartments are actually quite amazing. They are like 100 square meter. People pay, at the moment, 510 euro per month for apartment like that. It's, for Dutch condition, very cheap. And you have, let's say, this kind of loft-like uh, quality with big sliding doors that you can, can open which that you can hardly find in uh, this type of, uh, uh, let's say, social uh, housing project.